Hey YouTube, this is Bill. Uh, this is a video that's been requested by a number of viewers who've seen other videos, because I've done a video about each one of these speakers. So here it is. On the left, we have our new Challenger, and that is the TurboSound IP300. On the right is the speaker that I claimed, or I stated, was the champion of the budget PA world. And that is the reigning champion, the QSC CP8. So let's go over this. They both have more in common than differences. Let's start with the price. IP300 is $440. It's gone up, I believe it used to be 400. I got it for 440. The CP8 was also once $400. I think that's what I got it for. It now jumped up to 480 in this uh, crazy times we've been living in for the last two years. So one of the reasons I'm making this video is because of dealing with prices out there. Prices are just crazy. That this is, these are the budget alternatives. Uh, the next step up is, in my opinion, is the QSC K8.2, and that's pushing $700 right now. I used to say that was the greatest bargain out there, but I just can't say that anymore. That's, that's getting high. Uh, I believe it's $680, almost $700. So these speakers are for the people who are looking for something under $500, but they need the performance. So they're both good. They're both very good, and at the end, um, I know many people want to know which is which is the better speaker. So let's let's talk about it. First things first, weight. They're both very manageable. The IP three hundred is twenty six pounds. You would think it'd be more because it's uh, much larger looking, but it's still very manageable at twenty six pounds. It has a very nice handle on the top handles on the top and and on these on the back. So it's very easy to carry in the hand. Uh, the CP8 is lighter at 21 pounds, and obviously it's much smaller form factor. So if you, if that's a factor for uh, fitting in your vehicle, it's obviously much smaller. But the weight difference, I wouldn't say is extreme, but five pounds, it could be the difference. I know when I want to pick up something light, uh, even the, the CP8 is heavy at 21 pounds. That's when I turn to my trusty Bose S1 Pro at 15 pounds. I know I'm really spoiled uh, as far as weight, but that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm into, portable PA. Okay, what else can we say? As far as performance, sound signature, there are differences. The IP300, one of its greatest strengths is it has 120 degree dispersion and it's set up like a column array has a number of tweeters on top, and it has two 6.5-inch woofers on the bottom. The QSC is more of your traditional point source speaker. Uh, it throws 90 degrees, and in a home setting, you can tell the difference. When, you, when I A-B them, which I'm not going to do today for you, uh, it's, it's really obvious that the sound is coming from one little box on the CP8, and then you switch on the IP300, and the sound just spreads out, room filling, and it really sounds like maybe there's more than one speaker in the room. So one of the comments that I've read about other reviewers on the IP300 is that some people have um, gone with a pair of them and they've replaced their old hi-fi system. And they put two of these on the floor, flanking their TV, and it is very hi-fi sounding. So, and it fills the room. So that could be a uh, consideration for someone who wants to do double duty. They need something portable, maybe PA-wise on the weekends, small gigs, but they also want to replace their old stereo or a college student. I couldn't uh, recommend that IP300 highly enough for a college student. It'd be an incredible little system. Sound-wise, uh, because of the two 6.5-inch two inch woofers on the IP300, it does have noticeably, noticeably better bass than the QSC CP8. On the other hand, the CP8 has slightly better mids. 
So it's very hard to find everything in one speaker. It's always, I always tell people, it comes down to personal preference, what I like in a speaker, my sound signature could be something that you are not really into. And a good, something I want to mention is I also reviewed recently the Yamaha DBR10. That was also a speaker in this price range, actually less money than both of these speakers. And again, the sound signature was nice bass, ni nicer mids than either of these. So it really depends on what you need. But don't ask me too much about the DBR right now because it was returned. It just, I don't need that many speakers uh, meeting the same weight and uh, sound signature. An important uh, thing to note is both of these speakers are AC only. Both of these speakers do not have internal battery. So you don't want to really compare these to something like the Bose S1 Pro. I would say the high end on both of these speakers is very similar, which is a, uh, a high uh, complement to the IP300 because QSC is known for their crystal clear high end, excellent for live vocals, and the IP300 is, is its equal. It's right there with it. So... Um, I wouldn't judge or make my judgment on high end. They're both excellent. Talking about sound signature, a big plus in the IP300 column is it is Bluetooth. The QSC is not. I believe the QSC is an older technology, older release date. So you don't have Bluetooth on the CP8, which is, a, again, a big factor for many. So the IP300 has something that the QSC is lacking, and that is an EQ section. And it is digital, and it can be done from a distance, which is really a uh, feather in its cap. It has a nice EQ. It's, not a, it, it's only three band, uh, highs, mids, and lows, but it's, it's effective and it changes the sound. I have other speakers where you adjust the EQ and it really doesn't sound different, but on the IP300, it does. It has a gain control, that, again, from the Bluetooth, and I, I really like that feature where I can stand back from the audience distance and I can hear how it sounds. I can lower the volume, I can raise the volume from where the audience is sitting. So to me, that's super important. On the CP8, you have to run back to your mixer or run back to the back of the speaker. Okay, as far as differences, a, a very big difference is power. The CP8 has a 1000 watts amp, and you'd probably say, well, gee, how does it perform in such a small little thing? Well, it does. QSC is known for that. They've been doing this for a while. And the volume difference is definitely noticeable. As far as volume, you've really got to be careful of specs. Someone once, uh, one of their comments was on one of my videos is, why are you telling us about specs? We can read it ourselves. Well, unfortunately, specs don't tell you the whole story. Real, real world testing that I'm hoping I'm sharing is, is really the end all factor. So talk about specs. Uh, the QSC CP8 is rated at 124 dB max, and the turbo sound is rated at 122, 2 dB difference, and that is... Pretty uh, minimal, probably something you really couldn't hear. But in my real world testing, uh, there is a big difference actually. The IP300 was able to max out, and I do these tests before clipping. When I see clipping, then I back it off, and that's my, uh, my uh, max dB test. And I do it at the same track, at the same distance, and in the same location, which is usually my home. So the IP300, I was able to get up to 102 dB, before clipping, which is plenty loud. But on the other hand, uh, the QSC CP8 went to 110. Now, uh, if you know anything about dB reading, anything 6 dB or more is, is like adding a second speaker as far as volume goes. So uh, 110 compared to 102 is 8 dB. It, it really is a big difference, huge. So again, people are saying, how does that little speaker do it? Again, 1000 watt amp. So the CP, uh, C, the TurboSound IP300 is plenty loud, but if you need maximum volume, 
I have to give it to the QSC. No questions in that book. Speaking about power and DB, I did mention that both of these speakers are AC only, but I also want to mention that they're both super easy to run on an external power source. Both of them draw very little watts. And I've done, again, I've done these kind of tests in the home, outside. They don't, I think the CPA, the most I ever drew at max volume at clipping was almost less than 45 watts, which is nothing. So I have a small uh, five pound external battery source that I can bring for either one of these. And I can feel very confident that they'll have no issue running them outdoors. So at this point, I'm really feeling the manufacturers are charging a lot of money to put the battery inside. So if it's something that you considering um, and you don't mind carrying a small five pound battery source, you can really save a lot of money and you get much more performance. So a battery power speaker uh, is the best I've gotten is about 100 dB. And now here you're talking about 110 dB from a QSE CP8. That, that's huge. 10 dB is really, that's like three or four of the battery speakers. So here's the little guy I'm talking about in the middle. That's my external battery source, five pounds. Grant Maya, it's called, purchased on Amazon for $180, which is very reasonable. And here's the uh, surprising fact, 300 watts. That thing really can put out. I really like the fact that it has covered AC and USB ports. It's just a really good unit. So I'll give, I'll put the link down below, but uh, again, this little unit can run either one of these speakers with plenty of power left over. Uh, people have tested the CP8 on external battery source on even a 150 watt unit. And they said they can run for hours on end with, with no, degradation of sound, and again, at max volume. So I wouldn't put too much um, into purchasing an internal battery, if you don't mind carrying one more thing. But some people, one more thing is one more thing they can forget at a gig or lose, so that is a factor. So turning around the speakers, looking at the rear side, you can see some differences right away. So here I'm looking at the CP8, and we have a 1 8 inch auxiliary jack, which is great for plugging in a phone on the go. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, turbo sound can't do that because it doesn't have a 1 8 inch jack. So the only thing you can do is use the Bluetooth. It's a little more time consuming. Going back to the CP8, uh, you do have some, some EQ, Default external sub, dance. I just usually leave it on default unless I'm running it with a sub. On the other hand, the IP300, as I mentioned before, has a DSP section. It has an app that you can control a nice EQ. By the way, there is my Grant Maya and it's powering up both units easily. So that's interesting, 300 watts. Okay, getting back to the IP300. A big downside here, and I don't know why they did this, but uh, it has a link A out, link B out, but you cannot plug in a subwoofer or another external speaker. It will not work with um, without a mixer. If you on Bluetooth, it's not gonna work. In comparison, the CP8 has a mix out, and again, since it's not Bluetooth, you don't have any issue. You just plug in your XLR cable into a sub and it's, it's there. So that is a big downside for me personally, especially when I, I, I need Bluetooth on the go outdoors, that it's, it makes it much, much harder to run a sub. Matter of fact, I can't do it without a, without a mixer. So that's a big negative in my book. A huge plus in the QSC column, and this can be a deciding factor for some, and that is, as you see, the CP8 could be used in the monitor position. The turbo sound cannot, and it is used high, quite a bit by live bands for monitors, especially at this reasonable price, and it has the volume to be able to handle a live band situation. So that's a huge difference. 
Another big difference, this could be uh, the, maybe the biggest difference, and that is warranty. Turbo Sound has a, a normal type of warranty, one or two years, I'm not sure, I haven't looked it up, but the QSC is famous for their six year warranty. That, that's huge. And I, I have had to deal with QSC, they're very helpful, they have good phone support, tech support on, on, online, on the phone. So that that's huge, a six year warranty. That could, especially for a giggy musician who, who uses their their material roughly and who knows what can happen on the road. Six years compared to maybe one or two. A little heads up for QSC owners, and that is make sure to register for the six year warranty online. I believe you get five years and if you register online, you get the extra one year for the full six. Just a little heads up there. Some people have commented online that they prefer the turbo sound because of the looks of that long column look. And they put that on a speaker pole over a sub and it looks like a column array and it actually um, performs like one with that 120 degree dispersion. So that could be a factor. It does look really nice. CP8 uh, up high on a pole over a sub kind of kind of looks a little out of place, but those things are very personal preference. So for the people who've watched this far, most of you, or many of you, you want a winner. Which should I buy? And I can understand that because it's so hard, especially in these crazy times, to find both these speakers in the same store. And then you have to uh, be able to have, to be able to AB them in a store at, at a decent volume, which uh, the store doesn't really like too much. So it's really difficult. So uh, if you find a reviewer that you can trust, hopefully some of you, have found that in me. Uh, these videos can really help you make a buying decision. But what's great is you can always buy these things and then return if you don't like it. I know that's a hassle, but that is an option. In summary, plus and minus of each speaker. I hope I've gone over some of them. Before you make a decision though, what what is that? Uh, well, this is gonna complicate things. This is the brand new JBL Eon 710 just went up again, like everything else, it went up to $500 on Sweetwater. I got it for 450, but still it's only $20 more than the QSC, so it should definitely be considered. But I'm not gonna go into that on this video. If you're interested, please shoot me a question. I'll be glad to answer them, but that would be the subject of a different video. So in summary, which is the winner? Which should you buy in this price range? Portable PA. Well, let's just go over a couple of facts once again. Both very similarly priced. Uh, $440 compared to $480. So I wouldn't let $40 be my deciding factor. Most people hold on to PA gear for many years. So I don't think uh, price is an issue. They're both very, very similar. Warranty. The six years on the QSC. That, that is a big difference. That could be something you should you need to make a decision about. Form factor, some people like that long column look on the IP300. Some people like the fact that the QSC is so small, fits in their car so much easily. Uh, one is a newer technology, the IP300 with a digital DSP app, Bluetooth app that the QSC is lacking. So power wise, I, I mentioned the QSC is quite a bit more powerful the turbo sound is loud, but the QSC is almost double the power, almost. They are both excellent sounding, but I would say the turbo sound is more of a full range system from highs to lows. QSC has a little better mids, but uh, unless you AB them next to each other, it would be very hard to tell. I would recommend both these speakers with a subwoofer, but especially the CP8 really needs it. And to wrap it up, um, both these speakers are head and shoulder above anything battery powered like a, a Bose S1 Pro, just two or three times or even four times the performance. So the winner, well, unfortunately, I know a lot of people get angry when I do this. There, there's no winner here. This is strictly personal preference, what you personally need. They're both so similar, similarly um, performing speakers. They're both excellent. Uh, I was actually, thinking, do I, should I keep the turbo sound? It's just so similar to the QSC, 
but I just couldn't return it because it's just such great technology and such a small package at that price that I kept both. Uh, we'll see in the future which one I use more. I just got the Turbo Sound. It's been out for a while, but it doesn't really have the reputation or the, uh, the, the reviews that the QSC has. I don't know why, because it's, it's really a secret. So that's it. You can't go wrong with either one. They're both A plus for portable PA. Uh, you might want to shoot me a response, which one that you're going to get. And uh, uh, one of the comments was that, you know, that, that people are going for the, this column array system. When you put either one of these over a decent subwoofer, I can almost guarantee that the performance will pretty much equal or even outperform many of the column arrays out there that are going for $1,200 and above. Okay, so that's it. Hope this video helps you make a decision. Please ask questions. I'll answer them. And I will do more videos, comparison on portable PA in the future. This is Bill, signing out.